Okay, next segment of the show is probably one of my favorites, and maybe I'm just stirring the pot a little bit, but I like the trade rumors. And you know what? The thing is, though, too, when somebody brings up a, a Chikrin trade and the Leafs are linked to every single player that's in the books, including him, how can you not tune into that? Or, you know, when, when exactly. Brock Besser exactly. scratched from a game against Calgary, how can you not think about that? You know what I mean? Trade rumors exactly. are a beautiful thing, especially because we're coming up to the uh, the Christmas trade freeze. So you're basically, I think, from, from December 20th onward, you can't make any trades until after Christmas when the, when the break is over. So there are a, a couple of really big, big names that are on this list. And the fact that Bo Horvat, Brock Besser, Jacob Chikrin are all on that list is crazy. And Dylan Larkin's name has been thrown in for consideration. Yeah, it has. Holy. And that was one that I wasn't expecting. I think it was, uh, I want to say Corey Pronman, either Corey Pronman or David Pagnota. Nothing was officially confirmed. The Red Wings are shopping him, but they were exploring options. I don't know. We'll see. But <clears throat> I want to start off this segment with Brock Besser. So he's been talked about quite a bit recently. I know that the Canucks are trying to move him. Um, Bo Horvat, same thing. We're going to talk about Bo Horvat, Horvat next. Excuse me. Besser's been basically voicing his opinion that he's unhappy in Vancouver and that, you know, he wants to move on and, and go to another opportunity. So the Canucks are, are not actively trying to trade him, but they're at the same time, they're trying to find a new home for him. Are they going to get they much let for him? him? Probably they let not. him talk to other teams, yep. actually. So. Exactly. Are they going to get much for him? I don't know. But I would assume probably not, given the fact that, you know, he's going to probably want a lot more when his contract goes up. So we'll see. But in the wake of a Brock Besser trade, three teams that stood out to me as a potential suitor for Besser. Number one, you know, the Leafs. They're in on everybody at this point. They are. That's something that I was a little bit surprised about to hear is that Toronto's in on Brock Besser because when you think about it, that second line left wing spot is wide open. They, for some reason, can not find somebody to play on that second line left wing. Besser can play both the right wing and left wing. Right? Yes. Bunting has been good, but he is not the solution for playing on that second line. If the Leafs could give no. up, if this would be one of the very few instances where I would be okay with Toronto giving up Nick Robertson and maybe another draft pick. Yeah, you would think he would have to be part of the deal. Oh, for because, sure. Because, you know, like... Because honestly, they want to build I for the future. I honestly think Nick Robertson needs new scenery. Well, yeah, and the fact That's that he's why. he's been injured isn't really helping him either. You know what I mean? No, it's really not. It's yeah, it's just the fact that he's number one, he's been injured, and number two, they just he when he is in the lineup, they're not managing him as well as they probably should. Exactly. And that's a little concerning to me. And I'm just looking at it here. The amount of games that Nick Robertson's played this season is not many. Because no. either one, we've had a full lineup and there's no space for him in the lineup. Or number two, he's been injured and just hasn't really played a whole lot. And plus, he just got injured again. He hurt his shoulder and he's out for like six, eight weeks or something like yeah. that. No, yeah, he's he's out for a while. Yeah. So, and the other the other two teams that I found kind of interesting on this list were number one, the Nashville Predators, and number two, yeah. the New Jersey Devils. Which I think if the Devils got better. Holy crap, watch out. This team's going to be the best in the league. Yeah, exactly. Because the potential of him playing with somebody like Jack Hughes or that top power like play line is... 
would be Damon Severson, Dougie Hamilton, Jack Hughes, Brock Besser, and Nico Heischer. You would have to think Jesper Bratt would probably oh, yet, fit in there somehow. I would, I would even take Severson out and put Bratt on there. That's what I mean, exactly. You could put Besser maybe on defense because he's got like a wicked Oof. shot. That's, oh my God. I don't even, yeah, that's, that's crazy to think. And Nashville too. Yeah. Though they, they are. They could use somebody like Brock Besser. Yeah, and they, and they, for a team who's like itching to make the playoffs and who's, you know, um, getting real nervous because their yeah. playoff hopes are slowly going down, that's going to kickstart them. Absolutely. That's going to kickstart them. Now, Brock Besser, we talked about some of the teams that he could go to. We didn't talk about what the return would be and from what we're judging on, it's basically that the Canucks have said we're okay with not getting a whole lot for him. If I had to yeah. guess, it's going to be a roster player, uh, maybe a mid-tier prospect and like a second or a third round pick. So yeah. that's what I would think of the asking price. The asking price is, um, I will go over that more closer to when the trade deadline happens in February, but there are a couple more players on this list. And speaking of the Canucks, I want to talk about Bo Horvat, which if you're unaware of the situation that's been going on with him in Vancouver, um, they've been having negotiations, contract negotiations to extend him for quite a while now. And just the other day, he basically re- declined their last contract offer to him. And he made a statement through the team saying that he's going to focus on playing this year for the Canucks. And then he's going to worry about what comes next on the off season, which I mean, that's a, you know, that's the right thing to do, but clearly yeah. he does not want to stay in Vancouver. That is very worrisome for Canucks fans. Given the fact that he's your captain. Absolutely. It's very worrisome because you know, you, you want to trade him and get something for him and you don't want him to walk. No, exactly. Like, well, and- I'm, oh, rain, rain, rain. So you're going to have to cut this part. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Seriously, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all good. We'll, we'll just keep, keep going over it. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just wait. We'll just wait. Did you you stop recording, right? No. Yeah, you could just cut it out, honestly. Yeah, I'll I'll cut it out after. Shut up! <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. And just ruins like the recording. All right. Okay, K- 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 go ahead. So now there are a couple teams that really kind of interested me on uh, on this list that are looking at Bo Horvat and the three teams that I think are a little bit surprising is number one, Detroit's looking at him. Um, Boston's looking at him. And so is Colorado. Yeah, those are some pretty good teams as well. Among other teams, of course. But the three that stood out to me on this list are Detroit, Colorado, Boston. I think Colorado could use him the most right now based off the fact that they don't have Nathan McKinnon right now. Yeah, McKinnon's out. Landis who can who can play wing and center, he's out. Lekkinen, he's going to be out for a Lekkinen, while. Lekkinen, no, Lekkinen just came back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, no, you're right. But they need a centerman badly. Oh, yeah, they do need because a center really badly. I think their top center right now is... Miko Rantanen's playing center right now. And he's usually playing he, the right wing. And he and yes, Miko Rantanen does have experience at center. That's why they're playing him at center right now. That's like William Nylander. He has experience at center as well. Exactly. Which is why on the odd occasion that he'll he'll play center. But the Avalanche, I think they would need him more than ever. And because he is going to be a player of a higher caliber, it's going to cost them a little bit more. So I would probably say a first round pick. Um, you're probably going to need to get rid of a prospect to Oscar Olison, maybe. And then, yeah. you know, another pick another roster player. 
I'm sure that would work because you already know Finland. They love the no Finland. <laughs> <laughs> you already know Vancouver, and they love their Swedes. So exactly. I mean, yep. And that's their Swedes. That'll be interesting because I think that a potential deal with the Canucks would involve somebody like you know um, an Oscar Olsson a first round pick, yeah. a second round pick, and then maybe like a depth forward. You see, I saw somebody thinking that they would get Bowen Byram out of this. And I'm like, no, I mean, no. if it were for like a guy like Elias Pedersen, you're no problem getting Byram. But yeah, I don't think exactly. that's exactly. Mm. But for Bo or that, I mm. mean, no, I don't think so. That's, that's a no for me. I don't think so. And you're Benning. losing you're losing a player that plays very good that would play very good with somebody like Kale McCarr. Exactly. I would, I would even throw in a guy I mean, like Sample Ranta. Makes sense. Yeah, Sample Ranta works. Because he's a young player exactly. who has a little bit of NHL experience, and I think that he could do a lot of damage on the on the Canucks line with Andre Kuzmenko and Elias Patterson. Absolutely. I think that would work as well. So my trade to the Avalanche would be you get Bo Horvat. We get a first round pick, sample Ranta, and a second from this year. And I think that they say yes all day to that. Joe Sackick is just, he's laughing himself to the bank. Yeah, exactly. That, that right there be would be totally fun. an incredible deal. I would probably add in an Oscar Olison to that. You would probably think they would add that in Oscar Olison. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, you're right. I did, yeah, I did bring him up. So, yes, I would add in Olison for that as well. He'd be laughing himself to the bank. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, that being said, we got those two out of the way. And now I want to talk about next, before we move into all the Leafs stuff that we're going to talk about, and, yes, we're going to just completely go into a, a whole overhaul of Toronto stuff. Jacob Chikrin of the Arizona Coyotes. Yeah, A defenseman that has been talked about all summer that has been referenced by almost every team in the league, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, every single team. And everybody wants him. Everybody does. If we had to pick three teams that are most likely going to land him, who do you think it would be? As much as I'd like to say the Leafs, I... I don't see it. I I I don't see see it. it either. I mean, honestly, a team, honestly, a team that I see, honestly, the LA Kings. Oh yeah, I can see the, the LA I can see the Kings. The going LA after. Kings, I can see definitely bringing in Chikrin. Reason being, they have a lot of prospects. They have, they can give up. They they can afford to give up a first round pick because they are a contending team right now, and plus they can. Plus, they can give up up like a second round pick as well. I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't even hurt them. I think. Yeah, even no. Up a prospect like maybe somebody like you would have to think maybe Turcotte. I think they would. Yeah, Bill Thomas or something like that. You would likely have to give up but, a big package to get him because I know that Arizona well, said that they wanted said like a big prospect so that automatically tells me it could be Turcotte the asking price but... for for Chikrin from the Coyotes is two first round picks a roster player and a prospect an yeah, A plus is... prospect which that's a high asking price but that is a very high asking price so you would probably think it would have to be Turcotte two first round picks a second round pick that is crazy crazy but i think that i think i think the kings would still do that oh i 100 honestly and i think i mean the kings would still do that the other one though too the other team that could go after him is the buffalo sabers yeah uh, i know that, a lot of prospects too i exactly. know that you're thinking that what are you doing bringing the sabers into this they're not in playoff contention number one they're they're two points out of a wild card spot and number two if they need a left-handed defenseman that can play alongside rasmus Dahlin. Yeah, I mean, power, I mean, power is good, but, but he's, he's not, not at really that level it. yet. He's not at that level yet. They've got a, they would have a really good defensive core. 
Matias Samuelson as well has been playing very good. Jacob Bryson's very underrated. Yep, exactly. I mean, who else do they got on the fence? Howard, Darlene. Oh, there's just... And see, hold on up. The who's thing the about other six, who's like their sixth defenseman? And see, the thing about Rasmus Dahlin is that he primarily plays the right side, even though he's a left-handed defenseman, which I like. I'm a big fan of that. But here's my issue. The Sabres have a, a decent defensive core, but here's who they have. Jacob Bryson, Kale Clegg, Casey Fitzgerald, Henry Yokoharu, Ilya Labushkin, Lawrence Pilat, Matias Samuelson, Owen Power, and Jacob Bryson. Yeah, Lawrence Pilat was the one I was thinking about. He's the one playing with Darlene right now. They need an upgrade on at least one of those, and, and I think that Chikrin would be the the guy. And they have three defense. They have not one, not two. They have three defensemen who are injured right now. Exactly. Ilya, Ilya Labushkin, IR. Jacob Bryson, day-to-day. Owen Power is day-to-day. So, they only have... You want to know what's really bad right now about the Sabres? They only have five defensemen right now. Yeah, they... Exactly, and they're rolling with five defensemen. Yep, they're in complete shambles right now. I think another team... injury plague. Another team that could go after Chikrin. And this is simply for the purpose of these guys are contending and they are having a somehow shockingly good year. The Winnipeg Jets. Now, why do I say the Jets are going to go after him? Because number one, Connor Hellebuck is lights out. Shifley, Wheeler, Connor, that has been their top line. Solid to no comparison. Their weakness. Connor has actually been playing on the second line. Perfetti has actually been He's, playing on that top line. They've been they've been rotating those lines around. But the thing that I will say about the Jets is that their one teeny tiny little problem is their defense. Because they need a six defense. They need a they need a six defense. Because Morrissey's been good. Is the go- Morrissey? Okay, here's their defensive core right now. Um, so here's all the defensemen that have been playing for the Jets this year. I'm just going to pull it up. I got here. you. So yeah, so, the ones, the ones that have been playing for the Jets this year, Dylan DeMello, Kyle, Brandon Dillon, Kyle, 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 Kyle Capobianco. Yep. Dylan DeMello, Brandon Dillon, Josh Morrissey, Neil Pionk, Dylan Sandberg, who's currently playing Nate Schmidt and Logan Stanley. But there is a problem. Logan Stanley's injured. Yep. And Nate Schmidt is injured. And Vili Hainola is not working out on this team. Not at all. Like, he's not getting the playing time. He needs a fresh start. I think that the Jets could easily offer him, um, yeah, offer Hainola. You could probably get away with offering them Chaz Lucius and a first-round pick for, for Chikrin. Yeah. I think that would be a really... You get Jan Mizek, Jacob Chikrin, you give up a first, a second, Hainola, the and first, the, the two, Lucius. But they want two firsts. They don't want well, it's one first. They want two. But they realistically, two. I think it'll be a first, a second, Hainola, Lucius. You get Jan Mizek, Jacob Chikrin, and, th- and a third. Yeah, that could be good. That's what I Jan think. Jan Mizek. It wouldn't be Jan Mizek. It would be Jan <laughs> Jenik, I believe it would be. It'll be one of the two because those two are Jan very... Mizek is the one who's on Montreal. Is he? Is he not playing for? Is he not still playing for Arizona? No, Jan Mizek. No, Jan, No, you're thinking of Jan Yenik, who played for the. You're playing, you're thinking of Jan Yenik. Oh, maybe I Jan, am. Oh my gosh! You're thinking of Jan Yenik. Jan I'm, Isaac's the one who got drafted by the Montreal Canadiens. Ah, yes, Yannick you're right. Was the one who got drafted by the uh, Coyotes. You're right. You're right. I'm making a lot of mistakes. Forgive me. It's <laughs> it's early on a Friday. 
Jan Jenik, I believe. Yes. I don't know how it's pronounced now. It's Yannick Jenik, you know. Yes, but, but regardless, yeah. regardless, that would probably be the package. Uh, yeah, so. I think that would be totally fine, and I think Winnipeg would be willing to do that. Oh, 100 percent. I would if I were Kevin Chevalier off, and you're contending for the playoffs. The Jets are sixth place in the league right now. They're second place in the they Central are. Division. Like you're having the best year of your franchise's history right now. Do it. Pull the yeah. trigger. So I think that's that. And I think before um, before anything else, Winnipeg needs to get on this.